Final question, neighbor. Where is your manual? Let me see your manual. Let me see your manual. Uh -huh. So you need to get your manual. If you do not have this manual, you're going to be missing a lot. So get your manual. It's supposed to be 10,000 naira, but we're doing it for 5,000 all through this month because we're taking this course. And those of you online, you can also get it online. And um, so you can contact us and then you can get the e-copy of this and then you follow us as we journey together. Okay. So welcome to Success Business and Leadership School, Success Business and Leadership Service. Welcome to SBLS 2024. Hallelujah. So last week we began um, the, the journey. We're still in the foundational stage and I shared a lot of things with us and I gave us an assignment to go ahead and try and fill and go through the, um, uh, the test that we're going to run today because of the time that is available so that we'll be able to be sure that you have gone through that. I hope you did. Um, I've said it over and over again that if you are not informed, you'll be deformed. If you are not inspired, you will expire. If you are not updated, you'll be outdated. What you know determines how far you go because those who know rule over those who do not know. Information is the key to transformation. If you know better, you do better because the more you learn, the more you earn. So in the course of this series, we're going to be trusting God to help us have clear understanding so that we can walk in the manifestation of the dimension of wealth that God has in store for us. Because money is nothing but a tool for the fulfillment of purpose. Money is nothing but a tool for the fulfillment of purpose. When it comes to the world of education, we did a series last year on redefining um, education in the 21st century, an amazing series that did a lot of transformation in the life of people. And in that series, as I'm repeating right now, I made us to understand that there are three aspects to education. You are either educated, uneducated, or miseducated. Many of us know what it means to be educated. And we consider that to mean, oh, you went to school, you have certificates. So you say, yeah, it's educated. Many of us know what it means to be uneducated. Say, I didn't go to school, it's an illiterate, it's uneducated. But guess what? There's a third dimension. And it's called the miseducation of the masses, the miseducation of the populace. And that's where the real problem is. A lot of us have been miseducated. So if you don't have my new book, you need to get the new book in the School of Money book, and then extensively in the new book, I dealt with this aspect of miseducation so that we can understand the limitation of our understanding. And most of the time, many of us are very sincere. We have sincere hearts, but we are sincerely wrong. <laughs> we have sincere hearts, but we are sincerely wrong. Many of, many of you are really hardworking, but hard work is not enough. You need to be smart working. So hard work must be accompanied with smart work in order for you to really work in manifestation of the kind of wealth that God has in store for you. And I've also realized that when it comes to this issue of finances, uh, there is a spiritual dimension to this thing. And that's why I try to break it down. Every time we talk about supernatural, supernatural, there's nothing wrong with the supernatural, but do note that the supernatural is a combination of two things, the super and the natural. The super will remain super without the natural. The natural will remain natural without the super. It's a combination, a collaboration, a connection between the super and the natural that produces the supernatural. So for you to expect supernatural things to happen without a corresponding natural aspect, you're going to end up in frustration. So every time you need God to do something supernatural in your life, there will be an instruction that God will give you which brings in the natural component of that equation. When you obey the instruction and bring in that act of obedience, that becomes your natural response to a super inspiration. Your natural response to a super inspiration now produces supernatural results. But many times we want God to do everything. And I've told you in this house, please, Religion is more dangerous than the devil. Religion causes trouble in the life. Christianity is not a religion. Don't practice Christianity as a religion. Christianity is a relationship with your creator. Any religion that places the entirety of the responsibility for your liberty on God and God alone is a fraud. 
Any religion that tells you God will do everything for you is a lie. God will not do everything. You have a part to play. There are instructions he will give. There are principles he has established. It is you doing your part that makes his part to become a reality. And God will never fail to do his part. He's forever faithful. So when it comes to financial matters, there is a supernatural dimension, there's a spiritual dimension, there's also the natural dimension. And that's why I keep saying you are either in the secret cult or you are in the secret place. Unfortunately, secret cult, you are not there. Secret place, you are not there. And you are wondering. And I've said it over and over again, everybody is using something. Just be sure that what you, you are using is the right one. And guess what? If you are not using something, somebody is using something against you. <laughs> so you better know how to use prayer. Use prayer, use fasting, use anointing, use obedience, use sacrificial giving, use holiness, use, use communion, use, use it. <laughs> Everybody is using something. So be sure that what you are using is what is the right one. So this morning in part two, our focus today is on the financial intelligence test. So if you, are, if you have the manual, we're going through 26 questions very fast. And you have three possible answers. To these 26 questions, and then we'll mark your script, and then next week Sunday, we'll continue. 26 questions, so you can go to the page now, those of you that have the manual, and start um, getting So, there are three answers. Repeat after me. Yes. No. I don't know. Yes. No. I don't know. So, those are the three answers. So, you choose one out of the three answers for these 26 questions. So, question one. Do you know your present financial condition or net worth? Do you know your present financial condition or net worth? That means if I'm to ask you now, how much are you worth? Can you tell me in figures, this is what I am worth, this is my net worth. Can you tell me? If you can't, say no. If you can't, say yes. If you don't know, I don't know. Number two, are you satisfied with your present financial condition? I know the answer to that one. <laughs> I can answer for all of you. <laughs> Are you satisfied with your present financial condition? Even the richest people are still looking for more money. <laughs> yes, no, or I don't know. Number three, are you aware of simple ways to increase your net worth? That means if someone to say, so what do you think you can do to increase your finances? Do you have, oh, are you, if I do this, I will increase. Are you aware of the simple ways that you can increase your net worth? It doesn't mean you are doing it, but at least you are aware. Are you aware? Question four. Do you have enough savings to see you through six months of normal living expenses if you lose your job? God forbid, God forbid. There are many things that God has forbidden that life permits. Now, you see, a lot of people, religion, God forbid, God forbid, I can never lose my job. The job can lose you. Hello, I've met people in the course of my journey that have the arrogancy of financial stability. I'm so good. I was the best staff last year. We have one of our brothers here. The year, there was a, I think a year or two in a row, they gave him the award as the best staff. And the second year, they arrested him and put him in a, the, the same company. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that story. He was the best staff. Or the day trouble happened, the same company. They forgot that he was the best staff. They said they arrested him. He's, he's innocent, too. But if money is missing in your department, all of Nana will open scary. So, listen, if you lose your job now, can you survive three months? Hello? Can you survive three months? Years ago, our brother here called me and was telling me, he said, ah, Pastor, thank you for all you teach. He said, do you know I've been out of job for almost a year now? He said, but all the things you taught, all the savings, he said, even though I didn't have a job, I was still able to continue to live my life because I have saved up according to what you taught us. Do you understand? I said, oh, wow, that's good. Now, listen, many of the things we teach, you may not understand it, but most of the time, the way God operates is that he equips you for the future before the trouble comes. God doesn't want you to now be doing gr -gr -gr when they talk. So many times when you are hearing things like this, it's because God knows that there's going to be a COVID. 
When COVID came, many people became a beggar. They never thought they could beg. Because they had nothing saved up. And when COVID came, they became a beggar. That's when Urgent 2K, Urgent 2K, can I have Urgent 2K, became a major frontline discussion. Hello, can I have your Urgent 2K there? Can, I, can you find, find me something? Find me something. So do you have enough savings for six months? In financial management, we tell people you need to have between six to eight months of your living expenses saved up in cash. See how, how? Eh, you have to make it work. <laughs> and I've said it over and over again. Every money, you know, I did a series of savings last year now. So go back and listen to it, part one to five or thereabouts. Every money you are earning now, your past is there, your present is there, your future is there. If you don't save, you are eating your future. You are a witch. That's witchcraft. You are chopping your future. Next, do you save money on a regular basis? Or you save once in a while? December now, you are doing big boy. Now January has come, our strength, school fees. We are now looking up to God. I will lift up my eyes to the east. <laughs> and God sent you double salary, send you 13 months, send you end of the year bonus, you chop everything. Hello? You went to watch film, 7,000 naira ticket. The producers are making billions. They are crossing billion, two billion, three billion on one movie. And then you are part of those that, uh, my money is inside that one billion. <laughs> Hello? At least three of, I went with my wife and my boy, so that's uh, three times seven, 21K. Oh, I know, my money is there. Plus fueling to go there, plus, plus popcorn, plus everything. <laughs> but uh, let's just say 30K, shorts. But the way it works for people like us, we, we, you were there now. I have a stand there. I was making money. Did I not make money? So from the money, I thought, I'm all, I'm all with you. <laughs> so it is the book I sold, the money that I make, that I went to spend. You, what did you say? You carry your children's school fees to go and watch movie. Now, movie is over. Reality.com. Question six. Have you formed the habit of savings? They look alike, but they are not the same. The first one says, do you save on a regular basis? This one says, have you formed the habit? That means, as savings become an habit, as it become habitual, and to make it habitual, there are systems and structures and softwares and apps that can help you now. Just automate your savings. Give a direct order, direct debit, give, and let any money that comes in here, put it into this account. Any money that comes here, put it into this account. Hello? When I was sharing with you last year, I told you about what I experienced in South Africa. When we went to the bank to open an account, they gave me two account numbers. And I said, why is this? They said, no, every account comes with a saving wallet. I said, hey, ha, they don't do that in Nigeria. So I don't know whether it's all over South, but the bank where I open accounts in South Africa, they gave me two accounts. They said, this is your primary account, and this is a savings wallet attached to your account. I said, hey, ha, ha. So bankers, can't we do that in Nigeria? So that it will be easy for people to just be pushing money. And I say, so how does it work? They say, so any money you want to save, once you move it away from this primary account into that savings wallet, it has entered savings. I so if I want to collect it, they say you can't collect it with your card. That means once it has gone, it has gone. It's a different thread. So you cannot just wake up one day and go to ATM and say, wow. So that's how you become, look for ways. Number seven, do you have a well-defined and documented financial goals? Do you have a well-defined and documented financial goals? Is it defined? Is it documented? I want to make more money. It's not a goal. Hello? I hope to be rich. It's not a goal. Hope is not a strategy. I want to be blessed. It's not a prayer point. It's a useless statement. I want to be blessed. You're already blessed. Read your Bible. You can't become what you are. It's like me saying, I want to be a man. You can't say, I want to be blessed as a Christian. God has blessed you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Every child of God is blessed. Hello? What does it mean to be blessed? You have been empowered. <laughs> so what is your goal this year now? Listen, many of you, the goals that you did not set, 
you have not achieved. Because if you don't set goals, you cannot get the goals. And if you don't document this thing, you will even know when you achieve them. So what's your financial goal? Do you have a goal? Documented. Do you have a bank account? Do you have a bank account? I still had a discussion with someone in the U.S. just this last week. Because many times when I say some of this, they're like, ah, even in America, some people don't have accounts. I'm telling you. <laughs> they are using no, no, somebody else's name. They are using to do account. She said, I say, okay, no, just, you can use Zelle. You can they say, hey, I don't have those things. I said, well, what do I do? They say, hey, there's one place I put my money, but they gave me a check. I can write it. I said, hey, write check. Send it to my office in Atlanta. When they clear it, they will let me know. <laughs> I say, hey, America. So, do you have a bank account? Because many people have this mindset that, oh, if I put money in the bank, they will be deducting, they will be deducting. Yes, they will deduct because the bank is not there to help you. They are not your friend. <laughs> they are in business. It's not a charity organization. They will be deducting. So, you now go and put all your money in cash under the pillow. And then you now hear, Akbogbo market was on fire. Onicha market was on fire. Ariara market. The people will now be crying. Hey. Because they have money, cash, <laughs> that they kept there, that is supposed to be in the bank. Number nine, do you reconcile your bank statement every month? Do you reconcile your bank statement every month? None of you don't do that because you think you don't have so much money. But let me tell you something, the banks, they are stealing your money. Uh -huh. All the things you did inside, this, this one is for naira for text message. Did, you, did I send you, ask you to text message? Then this one is for email. This one, they give you different names that you don't even understand. Number 10, do you keep record of your income and expenditure? Do you keep record of your income and expenditure? Every money that comes in, do you have a record? Every money that goes out, do you have a record? Every time your expenditure is greater than your income, your upkeep will become your downfall. When your expenditure is greater than your income, your upkeep will become your downfall. So ensure that you keep records. What this does is, number one, it helps you to know where money is coming from. It helps you to know how much is coming. It helps you to be able to merge your efforts with your results. We call it cost-benefit analysis. So if you spend 10 hours doing something and all it brings is 10,000, that means it's 1,000 per hour. So you now ask yourself, is this what I am worth, 1,000 per hour? Then you begin to work on making an adjustment. If you spend two hours on something and it brings three million, you say, hey, two hours, ah, I'm going to make us sit down here. If you like, say, this is where it's working. And that's where many of us have increased our life every year. At the end of the year, we sit down, okay, these are all the things I did. This is where money came from, okay. This one is a waste of my time. It's not working. So, new year, I do this, I get more of this. And that's the way it works. Number 11, do you know how much you spend, especially every month? Do you know how much you spend? Many of you, millions have gone through your hand, yet you don't have 50,000 in your account. But millions go through your hand because just mean all over money is for spending. You are just collecting and spending, collecting and spending. So do you know how much you spend every month? When you sit down, document how much you spend every month, it will make you say, wow, you mean I spend this much on this? Yeah. Recharge card, 27,000. Who are they called? Then you just suddenly realize that, look, I need to stop this. Because many of you, nobody is calling you. You are the one calling people so that they will know you have phone now. <laughs> Hello, yeah, hey, I saw you on Facebook. Yeah, we were in primary school together. Uh, Shalewa now, you know, I used to be slim. Uh, but I, I, I don't put weight to, I'm a mother now. Uh, Shalewa, save the number. <laughs> and three minutes have gone. Then, hello, honey. How far is the plantain ready? You are now calling your husband and wife in kitchen from bedroom to kitchen. You are using the telephone for intercom. That's how many of us waste money. You know Nigerians waste time on phone. Hello, ah, good morning, sir. Thank God I got you. Ah, I've been trying to reach you. One minute is gone. No. Ah, you are blessed, sir. It's an honor. Ah, how is madam? How is uh, the little one? Ah, the Lord, ah, his church. Ah, he, the, you have not spoken, no. Three minutes is gone. And the person is, oh, go to the point. It's like, what, why are you calling? Go straight to the point. 
Number 12, do you spend less than you earn? Do you spend less than you earn? Many of you spend more than you earn. You even spend next month's own. You collect advance, advance trouble. You collect advance to spend it. If you wear tomorrow's clothes today, you'll be naked tomorrow. If you eat tomorrow's food today, you have no life. <laughs> no food tomorrow. You live tomorrow's life today, no life tomorrow. If you spend tomorrow's money today, you have no money tomorrow. Next, do you have a household budget? And are you successful at managing it? Are you successful at managing it? Hello? So everything in our family is budget. This budget for this or this budget for this one. And then when we have a family meeting last month, because every, we do meetings like two, three times a year. When it's wedding anniversary, we do meetings. Ah, is this marriage? Are you happy? Is there anything I'm doing? So at the end of the year, we did it. So my wife said, what is the thing that, I said, there's one thing that you need to stop. I said, you will just be carrying, I will have a budget. I've given you the, I will put money on the table. You will just be going there, 2,000, 3,000. You just, I said, for you, know, you say, you know, stop like that. <laughs> She said, that one can never stop. So just forget that one. Everything, I said, but I've given you, including me. I said, that one, ah, 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 you are daddy, you are daddy, you are. That one can never stop. I said, hey. Because you put, you just come, bro, 2,000. I said, but all this thing has been given, budgeted. So just to let you know, <laughs> Number 14, do you avoid major credit purchases? Many of you, what you are wearing now, you have not finished paying. (laughs) And you are not ashamed. How can you buy cloth that you have not paid for and you are wearing it? Are you all right? Who did this to you? You are borrowing weave on, borrowing wig. Boy, you know, I I won't. What? Hello? Until they will now disgrace you. Return my bra. Return my bra. <laughs> Hello? Borrow, 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 borrow. How can you buy cloth and break your life into installments? And then you are posing. And as you are posing, you have not finished paying. And there's something called the joy of newness. When you wear something new, after you don't wear it, the thing don't win. The grace to now pay is no more there because like, ah, I beg. <laughs> it's like all these people that will tell us to come and buy a for for their wedding. I pay 50K. You they marry, I pay 50K for wedding. Two months later, you say, don't divorce. <laughs> you are now sending it on WhatsApp group. Uh, please, let's uh, be sensitive to our brother's challenge. Nobody should wear the Ashwebi again. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> How can the clothes be older than your wedding? You say, make a, I go wear them all because I paid for it. I've not finished using my 50,000. <laughs> 15. Do you take advantage of all the savings and investment opportunities that come your way? Do you take advantage of all the savings and investment opportunities that come your way? The word POOR, P O O R, is an acronym for passing over opportunities repeatedly. So, opportunities will always come. Do you take advantage of them? My mother will always say, Tabara na lie, anira na true. Tabanika, did you, ke yon buruku koja, e yon riri no a koja. That means, if you say you want to close your eyes for all the evil people to pass, good people will pass, you will not see them. So many times, we don't realize that investment is R and R. Risk and return. That's investment. R and R. Every investment in this world has a dimension of risk, a dimension of reward. 16. Do you have any investment that helps you to reduce your taxable income? I hope you know that as a salary earner, they collect tax upfront. As a business owner, you only pay tax when there's profit. But many of you don't understand these dimensions. Hello? 
You see, a lot of organizations at the end of the year, when they see that they have money in the bank, what do they do? They go and buy a house or buy a property, put it in the balance sheet, and they end the year with minus, no tax. The next year, they sell the property higher, add it again, do business. That's how rich people are avoiding tax. <laughs> and you, they tax you from head to toe. 17, do you diversify your investment? Do you diversify your investment? Or you have put all your egg in one basket? All your investment is in Ukraine. All your investment is in Gaza. The richest man in Gaza. Hello? Look, in those days, there used to be people from the east and the west in the north. And all of a sudden, we had the Zango Katav, where people's property were born. Many people were running away. People that were billionaires became poor. Many times, then civil war came. And then a lot of people said, no, let me just go. So now you see a lot of people, they, they are in Lagos, so they now go and build a 13 bedroom mansion in the village for lizard and cockroach. Because somewhere in their mind, there's a Biafra mindset. So if they mess us up again, we'll go to the village. It took time for many people to be delivered from their Biafra mindset to now begin to diversify to make sure that they have investment in different places. But many of us, now all our investment is in Nigeria and is in Naira. Nothing bringing foreign income. If your children are going to go to school in America in 11 years' time, what have you put in place to get dollars to pay school fees then? Think about 11 years ago. How much was dollar to Naira? Fast forward to 11 years' time. How much do you think it will be if nothing changes? Number 18. Are you satisfied with the contribution from your investment into your total income? Are you satisfied with the contribution from your investment into your total income? 19. Do you feel you have a brilliant financial advisor or team of advisors. If you want to make a financial decision now, who do you call? Poor man. The cancer poor man. That's why all of you are sitting there standing all this landlord. Hey, you better stop insulting people. Whatever you insult, you cannot enter into. You can't attract what you don't honor. They're insulting your guy. They saw the, hey, hey, monkey, they walk, baboon, they show. If it's easy to start business, go start your own now. Why your grandpapa no start? Why your father no get business? Somebody has started business. When you are coming, you beg to apply. Now you don't enter. You are forming union. Hello? One of our ministers here got a job recently. So he sent me a testimony. He has gotten a job. I said, no problem. Then, maybe not too long ago, he sent me a, a text that they have sacked him. <laughs> I said, ah, which one? He's not, up, he never used three months there now. So I said, I said, what happened? He said that uh, we, we complained to management. <laughs> we complained to management about the way they are treating staff. I said, so you got a job. You have not done three months. You're already complaining to management. And it's your mouth, they will hear the complaint. <laughs> All the people that were there before, you can't complain. Now you go complain to management. So he replied again, it's not so. We're in a meeting and they ask, why are people not serious? And they boom, and out to her. Say, welcome to the job. Complain to management. <laughs> Who are your advisors? Poor man, the council, poor man. Number 20, do you feel you have sufficient life insurance coverage? At least, even if you die poor, let your family be rich. Hello? So that the day you die like this, at least your wife will get like 5 million, 10 million, 20 million, 50 million, depending on the life insurance. You do. And then, when you are doing life insurance, it's husband and wife. Insure, insure. Don't think that I will die before you. Because African women, I don't know where they got that virus from. They just believe that the man will die first. So they are telling you, you know, because of the children, and they catch life insurance. Hey, hey. As you are insuring me, I insure you. You want to chop on my head? I will chop on your head too. And then for those of you in diaspora, you need to insure your children too. The way they are shooting in school now. Pa, 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 pa. Uh -huh. So that God forbid bad thing. 21. Do you have a plan for your children's college and university education? Do you have a plan 
for your children's college and university education. The day you give birth to a child, go and open an account. If it's 5,000, 5, 10,000 a month, be putting it there. By the time they are 18, it will be something. Go and open a trust for the child and be putting money there. And then if you have opportunity to travel, you have account abroad, just be putting the money abroad in dollars or so that whenever the time comes, it will help you. 22, do you own a house? Your grandfather was a tenant. Your father a tenant. You are a tenant. It's not a generational cost. It's a generational choice. Because the money to buy a plot of land, you use it to buy iPhone, and your house is not working well. <laughs> you use it to buy handsets, and your mindset is not working. Hello? Bag and shoot to match. Ordinary one plot you don't have. You're already 25 years old. A quarter of a century, a year, 25 years of your life gone. One plot you don't have. The earth is the Lord. The earth is the Lord. <laughs> Go and take one plot. You'll discover that God is not the owner. <laughs> There's a human being that owns it. <laughs> 23. Do you have a plan to retire in comfort? Or you want to be going to Abuja to kill with drips? Say, oh, retiree, come for accreditation. In Abuja, you see people, their grandchild will now carry what they are weaving in a bag. One grandchild is carrying, son is carrying, they are coming to do accreditation. For how much? 40,000. 40,000. But guess what? Everybody that work in the same office with that man is not on that queue. So, parents, are you ready for this one? Your children are not a retirement plan. No. So all this African nonsense. So you are an okay, Abby. You want to be sucking the breast of your own children? Incest. So plan your retirement. Whether you like it or not, everybody will retire one day. You say, well, are you prepared? 24. Have you prepared your will? Say, will get. Yes, have you prepared your will? <laughs> Once you have something to share, a will is just decide where your money will go. That's all. So when I go, all my clothes, give it to my younger, all my shoe, all my list on my laptop. That's all. It's not that you have billions. Or hey, somebody else will decide it. 25, are you in control of your financial future? Are you in control? Or oh, God is in control. <laughs> 26, are you satisfied with the contribution you have made to the world? You know, life is not about duration, but about your donation. Jesus that we are all celebrating now, he died at three and a half years. Do we call it untimely death? No, because he has fulfilled purpose. So let's mark our script now. Everybody read through your answer. Oh yeah, check. How many no or I don't know do you have? Quickly go through it. How many no or I don't know do you have? How many no or I don't know do you have? Okay, if your no or I don't know is between zero to four, can I see your hand? Between zero to four. Okay, a few people. If you know, I don't know, it's between 5 to 10. Okay, more people. So you are seeing the script there. So 5 to 10, you are on the right track. Just keep it up. Then, if it's between 11 and 12, okay, so you know, the pulse is weak. You know, when you think that somebody has fainted, you now come and say, oh, no, I can feel the pulse. It's alive, it's alive. I can feel the pulse. <laughs> Dave is 13 and above. Wave your hands and put the devil to shame. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bye-bye to poverty. This year, God will change your story. The Lord will honor you. The Lord will favor you. The Lord will connect you. The Lord will surprise you. And he will perfect all that concerns you. In Jesus' name. Every head bowed. If you are here this morning, you have not given your heart to Jesus. And you would like to give your heart to him. 
Say, Pastor, I would like to give my life to Jesus. Whatever you are, I'd like to give my heart to Jesus. I want to pray with you. Can I see your hands, please? Anybody like that? Want to give your life to Jesus? Can I see your hands? Do we have anyone that is yet to come into Jesus here? Hallelujah. Let's bring out our offerings. I want to pray over your finances. Bring out your tithe. Bring out your offering. 6 a.m. tomorrow morning, we'll meet again online. Do we have any tithe in the house? If you have a tithe, please rise. Package your offerings. If you are doing a transfer, do a transfer. Father, we ask your blessings upon every tithe this morning. We thank you for 